I want to just make a very pale mix of raw sienna and maybe a little bit of Naples yellow and even a touch of cadmium red, but quite a watery mix because this is just going to be put over the areas that are still white on the, on the hair, but not all of them. Around the muzzle, we've got to be careful because there is some white areas here and some blue on this side. So we've got to be careful of that. But over the ear, there's some really quite distinctly light patches, and we're just going to literally glaze those in as we go. Put some over the top of the eyes like so, and down into this ear here. And we're going to leave that to dry while we then go on to uh, putting some of the cooler shadow tones into uh, the body of the dog. We need this to dry before we can carry on working. But you can see that I've just literally placed a lovely warm glaze, in a sense, over this ear. And that just sets it up for some further work later on in the painting. Just going to bring it on down. Not too wet and we'll have a problem. Just bringing it on down into this part around the side of the muzzle and up into that part there. That's nice. We can leave that there and we can leave that to dry off. It's going to take a few minutes to dry off but it gives us plenty of time now to work into the cooler shadow areas of the dog. Primarily, apart from what's brown on these spaniels, is what's white. And the point about what's white is the fact that so many people tend to paint white and then they apply a bit of black to make a gray and create the shadow size and what happens is that it's a tonal painting it's not a color painting it's uh, a flat painting it's not got three dimensions so when we paint a white dog the idea is we paint a very bright white and the way we do that i'll show you a little later on and the cooler side the shadow side is Predominantly cool blues and violets, but what we want to do is we want to mix them up. So the first big job we've got to do is we have to start making a nice mix. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it onto this side and I'm going to make a large mix. So I'm going to make a, a nice area of ultramarine blue and I'm going to bring in a little dash of alizarin crimson. Then I'm going to mix that with some white. Now, if you watch carefully, I'm not actually making the whole puddle one color. I'm actually taking a color of blue, a little bit of alizarin to that, and I'm still retaining some of that intensity. And then I'm mixing the two of them off with a bit of this white. And that is going to be the fundamental area for this part here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to lay some of these colors in around on that part there and down the side of the shoulder, coming in under this part following my lines that I've given you as a guide from the tracing up into this part here. Now, you can actually make that a little paler as it gets near this white. Just vary it and mix it up just a little bit as we come down and bring that round to there. That's fine. And just up under the neck, just a little paler, just a subtle color. Now, it's going to shift a little bit to the pink because you put some alizarin in, and you can actually make it go a little further if you want to. But just vary the, the values of the color that you're putting in. All these pigments will alter. You do not want any particular one to be dominant, so you're just going to mix it up as you go through. The, the color blue that we're using is going to be mixed up a little bit, and I want to just put a little bit of pale color down the side of the muzzle. What I want to do is have a little bit of cobalt blue and the white, and because cobalt blue is a yellow-related blue, as opposed to the ultramarine, which is a red-related blue, when you put alizarin and, and ultramarine together, you get a lovely purple. You don't get such a great purple when you put cobalt and alizarin together. But when you put cobalt and white together, you get a very beautiful blue, pale blue color. And we're going to use that to put the side of the muzzle into shade. And I'm just going to bring it in underneath the nose and there. We can actually put this under the chin as well because that really works quite nicely. That's good. And we can bring some into this now. And you, this is where you can actually mix it up because you've got one color blue and now we're going to put this pale color in and it acts as extra highlights, subtle highlights, because what happens is, with the dog sitting in, in this case with its paw up, the shaded areas are reflecting light from other parts of the dog. So you've got a bright part of the dog, but the reflected light is affecting the shadow areas too. There's going to be lots of little areas that are going to be a little bluer, a little paler than another part. Even the white areas are going to be a little darker in places, a little yellower, 
maybe a little browner, whatever. So you can mix it up. And this is why I've said have lots of different areas on the palette that you can add to. And then we can bring the same cobalt blue and white mix into the back end of the dog where it's sitting on its haunch. This is blocked in for the moment because we need to do quite a bit of work on this later on. And I'm going to bring a little bit of the other mix in, the, the warmer mix. You can see the difference between the yellow blue, i.e. the cobalt and, and the white. And you can actually then see the difference between the purpley colors of what is ultramarine and a little bit of alizarin. You can see the differences there. And it's quite important because you can use them to great effect with each other. And that's it. I'll just block that in because this is going to get a lot darker in here later. So that's not a problem. Bring it down through the chest. And this is going to be dark in here where the lighter part of the chest is in deeper shade. It shows a bit blue, but as it recedes back round the side underneath the armpits of the dog and the uh, chest cavity, we're going to make it a lot darker later. But for now, we're just going to leave a little hint of this blue in here. We're just going to soften this edge because I don't want such a huge contrast when I put some white areas of fur in. I just want to soften that a little bit. And you start seeing a uh, little different forms. What happens here is you've got a lot of contrast. You're going to have the white area here, so you're going to have an immediate contrast with this shadow area of the leg. So it's important to establish that as quite a hard edge. And then we can bring that down through there like so. Now that is the edge of the body of the dog. We can just quickly draw that in because what I want to do now is establish some of the white areas. So I do need to have a clean brush, uncontaminated. That's the last thing I need. Often I paint with two brushes. One will have all the dark or all the cool tones or values of color, and the other one will carry all the warm or lighter values. So that's not a bad idea to have both there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to choose another area, and I'm going to mix up a large area of white, and I'm going to put a tad of Naples yellow into that white. And I'm just going to block in quickly the white fur. Now you'll see that it is anything but white. But I can tell you now that we can go back over with white and we can still get the glow of the yellow through. But it does give us a really, really bright color to work to. I believe I'm right in saying that it was Turner that showed us that by putting a hint of yellow into our white, we get what is essentially the, the brightest color that we're going to see. So reserve it for the brightest areas of your painting. It's really important. Make sure that you cover your drawing lines created by the tracing. We don't want pencil marks to show at the end of the painting. And you can see automatically, I'm turning the paintbrush around just to show you that you've got this very stark contrast between the area of the ear and the white, but the brightness of that yellow just accentuates that white look. Just bring that through here and into these areas around the shadow area. And we're just going to go back in and check areas that we want to check. Now that's a little tougher of fur that a lot of these spaniels have, and we'll form that up a little later. And whilst we're on the subject of this, we're going to put the bright color into this pore too. Just block it in. So I'm going to bring it all the way up into the top here and just soften this. If you're a little bit careful, we're going to actually bring it up into this side of this nose before I forget it. And to there and over the bridge of the nose. And that's as far as we're going to take that for the moment. Okay, use your fingers. I often use my fingers to just to soften edges and to bring them together. A little bit on the side of the mouth there, not too much, just enough where it's catching the light. I'm just going to push the brush out. Now that white and that blue are really singing and dancing together, and that's really important because what we want to do is to create a beautiful contrast between the cools, the shadows, and the brightness of the dog in the sunlight. And if we just use plain white, and gray, we could never achieve that. So what we're doing now is we're using blues and reds and we're putting a hint of yellow, not a bright yellow, but we're using Naples yellow. It's a really useful yellow and that just makes it glow. If it's not enough or if it's too yellow later on, we can go over with a pure white or, or even more reduced value of that Naples yellow in there and just make it sing a little bit more. And we're going to make sure that we vary some of these other blue tints again. And I want to apply a little bit of cadmium red light with Naples yellow 
and a little bit of that purpley blue mix that we had just now wants to be a, like a, a mid-tone gray. And what I want to do is just bring in an area of the neck that is not quite a shadow area, but it's got a lovely glow in it that we're going to just bring down as part of the throat. I'm going to bring some underneath the chin too. It's a warm accent to the shadow area. If it's a little too warm, we can actually put in a little bit more blue, just to lessen the impact. And I am blending quite heavily with my fingers at the moment. I do it a lot, and I've always been told that uh, God gave me hands before he gave me a paintbrush, and they don't wear out as fast as paintbrushes go. Very useful. Just bring that brown into the shadow and you've added another pigment into those blues and those violets. You've made a chromatic or, or colored mid-tone gray, which is just messing around with the whole thing, the look. But it does make the whole painting start to gel and work together. That's good. And just bury it a little bit more, a little bit more red in there maybe. Just bring it on down through into the body not losing all of the blue. We want to keep some of that. We're going to stop there for a moment. I need to take a few minutes just to sit back, look at what's happened so far with the painting before we move on to the next part. So I'm going to take a little bit of downtime just to study it, maybe a few alterations and a few enhancements, and hopefully then we can start on more information into the face and the head. Right, so I've got the painting to a good stage in progress. We've got to start thinking about the finer detail and all we've really done so far is paid attention to blocking in lights and darks, shadows and, and highlights. I want to take a little time out now just to check what I've done and then we'll come back a little later and we'll start looking at the eyes and, the, and filling in some detail to complete the painting. This brings us to the halfway point in this painting, so come back on the next program where we complete the Springer Spaniel for you. Now available to buy. Try these techniques at home whenever you wish. The extended DVD of today's workshop and the book that accompanies this series are now available from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.